All right, so this review lesson on Chapter 7 goes back to the idea of these algebraic equations. Now, we have, once again, on the previous lesson, we had expressions and building expressions. Pretty short video. This video is going to be a little bit longer because we're going from sometimes making an expression but then going into an equation. Once again, an equation is make sure I have an answer with it. I want to be solving for either the answer if I substitute in for my variables or have my variable and I have my expression, I got to solve and figure out what my answer for my variable is. So I'm saying variable and I'm saying coefficient are the key terms that I need to understand. My variable is my letter anytime that I have it in my problem. My coefficient is a number that goes with that variable. They're connected side by side. If it's a number by itself, then that's a constant. And there are times that I have to know what I'm going to do with that constant in order to solve for my answer. This is where I taught you several times um, on several different lessons before, doing the opposite function on the opposite side. We're going to review that multiple times on this lesson because once we get through this lesson, then on the next couple of lessons when we do inequalities, I have to be able to figure out how to do that. Opposite function on the opposite side then allows me to solve for those missing variables. That is going to be carried on from these lessons all the way through junior high and high school um, where you're doing math and even in chemistry. So as we look at these things then, some of these are just going to be making an equivalent expression. So I'm not going to solve for the letter to start out. Um, when I look at this then, it's saying, well, I want you to combine any like terms, and like terms may have different coefficients that have the same variable, or they may be constants themselves. So all that means is, it could be a number with a letter, and if the letters are all the same, I could combine my numbers. If it's a constant, and I have like four, and then a minus two over here, I can put those together and get a positive two. When I look at this, all of these coefficients are different, but the variables are all the same. I have x, x, x. Now you can just add all of those together in your head and put the x with it, or you can just start from left to right and combine the first two. 7 plus 2 is 9x. This is still the 5x, so I keep it. But then I have to put the 9 and the 5 together, and I get 14. You could start at the very beginning. This is the only one that we would have where we don't actually have any work to show because all of these are x, and if I just combine the coefficients together, 7 plus 2 plus 5, I get my 14, and I keep my x. This one I got some work to show because I got to see which ones are grouped together. So as long as they have the same variable, then they're going to be grouped together. So I'm going to move my minus 2a, the sign that is in front of the pairing of numbers or the constant that's by itself, has to stay with it. So the minus sign, the subtraction, goes with the 2a. And I just carry it over to the 8a. I put it in parentheses so I can see if they are grouped together. I know I'm going to work with that first. And then my constant, my uh, plus 11, would be by itself. So when I put 8a and minus 2a together, I just add and or subtract the numbers. This is subtraction, so 8 minus 2 is going to be 6. And I keep my a, and then I have just my 11, my constant by itself. Not solving for the variable, once again, just making an uh, equivalent expression. So this is the distributive property. So the distributive property is... I'm looking at what I have and what that tells me mathematically. So I have a number out here touching parentheses, and since the first week of school, when we reviewed mathematics, is that there are multiple ways of doing multiplication. If it has a number touching a set of parentheses or a number touching a letter, that's multiplication. So I'm going to be multiplying into each of those numbers and keeping the math sign that's in between them. So I'm going to multiply in with my 3 and my m, and that's just going to give me 3m. And then I'm going to take the 3 and I'm going to multiply into with the 7. So 3 times 7 gives me 21. Once I do that, I just keep the math sign in between them. Well, what does that mean mathematically? Well, it means that I could solve for my m if I wanted to, but I'm not going to, not at this point. I'm just figuring out mathematically how to set that up. They may tell me to substitute something in for m. They may tell me to solve for m. But right now, I'm just finding an equivalent expression. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. I have the 4 on the outside. I'm going to distribute it into 
It's touching parentheses, so I know that's multiplication. So I'm going to take my four times my 2t. I just multiply the numbers. I can't do anything with the t. It just has to stay. So I'd have 4 times 2, which is 8, and I have to keep the t. Then I'm going to take my 4. I'm going to multiply in with the 3. I'm going to distribute it through. 4 times 3 is 12. Once I've done that, I just keep the math symbol in between them. So I just simply have 8t plus 12. Now that, once again, is just finding equivalent expressions. What would they be equal to? From this point forward, though, now we're going to evaluate. On some of them, they're going to tell me what to plug in for my letter, or, in these two examples, my letters. Or, when I get to the next slide, then, I'm going to have to solve for my letter. This is where I'm finding answers. So if I'm given the expression of 13 plus 6x, but now I'm going to be doing two different math problems. Because one time I'm going to use a 3 for my x, and one time I'm going to use a 2 for my x. So once I do that, I'm going to just plug it in. I'm substituting in. So that's the substitution property. F3 is going to go in place of the x. And then we'll do the 2 in place of the x. I'm going to have two math problems. So my first one starts out is I have 3 plus 6 times, because a number touching a letter, a coefficient with a variable, means multiplication. And they tell me to use the 3 for the x the first time through. Well, when I do that, I know that 6 times 3 is 18. So then I'm left with 3 plus the 18, and then that's basic, straightforward addition. When I add those together, 8 plus 3 is 11, carry my 1, 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. It's just 31. But I'm not done, because I have two different numbers I have to use. So I'm going to go back to my original problem of 13 plus 6x, and I'm now going to plug in my 2. So I have 13 plus 6 times 2, because once again, a coefficient with a variable means multiplication. And 6 times 2 is 12, and then I have my 13 plus 12. Straightforward addition, 13 plus 12 is going to be 25. So I have two different answers for this one problem. On this one, I'm substituting in 2 and 1. Notice they have an exponent up here. Well, we know how to do exponents because we just did that a couple days ago. So it shouldn't cause us any problems whatsoever in our math. If I plug in my 2, though, I'm going to have that problem. And then I'm going to plug in my 1 for the x, and I'm going to have that problem. Two different problems, so two points of showing work, two different answers. So this is worth four points. This is worth four points. I plug in with my 2 wherever there is an x. So I'm going to start out by write, writing this one with the 2 substituted. I have 2 times, because coefficients and variables means multiplication. The 2 plus 3 plus 2 squared. So I have to keep that exponent of 2. Then I do the math. Well, I have 2 times 2, which is 4. I keep my plus 3. I keep my addition sign. 2 squared is 2 times 2, which is also 4. And then I just add. 4 and 4 is 8 plus 3 is 11. Or 4 plus 3 is 7. 7 plus 4 is 11. I get my final answer. I have two points out of my 4 so far. I have to go back to my original problem, but this time where the x's are, I have to substitute a 1. So I'm going to now have 2 times 1 plus 3 plus 1 squared. Then I can do my math. 2 times 1 is 2 plus the 3 I keep. And then 1 squared is 1 times 1, and 1 times 1 is just 1. So I just have a 1 there. That gives me 2 plus 3 plus 1. I have an answer of 6. Second problem, second answer, total of four points for those problems. Now, as I said a moment ago, down here, I have two different letters, so I have to substitute them in correctly to do the math correctly. My original problem is 7x plus y plus 16. So now you're going to substitute in on your paper a 2 for an x and a 3 for a y. I'm going to rewrite my math problem. So I know I'm going to have 7. It's multiplication because variables and coefficients are multiplication. 7 times 2 plus, well, there's a y, so I'm going to plug in my 3, plus 16. It's a constant by itself. Now I have to do my multiplication. 7 times 2 is what? 7 times 2 is 14, and I keep everything else the same. Plus 3, plus 16. 
Then I go from left to right, 14 plus 3 is 17, 17 plus 16 gives me a final answer of 33. I'm going to go to my last one. This one, I want you to do on your own. See what you get. Check your answer once you have it. Pause the video now and come back to me. So hopefully you have an answer. And the first thing you did was you looked at that you're using a 4 for your A and a 2 for your B. And you began to write the problem by plugging or substituting those in. So you should have on your paper 8 times 4, because it's multiplication, plus 11, minus the 2, and then the B told me it was 2, so 2 times 2. And then your next step is to do the multiplication parts. So you would take 8 times 4 is 32, and 2 times 2, which is 4. Then you can go from left to right with your addition and subtraction. 32 plus 11 gives you 43 minus 4. Your final answer would be 39. Okay. So then my final four that I'm looking at. Now I'm going to be mixing some things up, but I don't have anything to plug in with. But notice what the directions say. Use properties of operations to solve for an equation. And once again, an equation is an answer. So this is where we have to remember how to set things up. I have my 9C and I'm going to carry my plus C over to it because they are like terms that have the same variable. I have to combine them. And then my constant with its sign, the subtraction of 6, has to be moved to the back. I'm going to join them together. So when I have that it's equal to 4, which I somehow left off there and there what the answers are. Then I have to start combining. 9C plus C is going to give me 10C minus the 6 equals 4, so I brought the rest of it down. But now what do I do? So this is a reminder of what I do. I'm going to do the opposite function, then I'm going to do it on the opposite side. I always start with my constant, and then my last step is always with my coefficient that is with my variable. My point is to solve for my variable for this one, which is the letter C. If I have subtracting of 6, what is its opposite function? So as we have said all along, addition and subtraction go together. They make a fact family. If it's a multiplication and division, they go together. They make a fact family. So if I'm adding, then i got to subtract. If I'm subtracting, then i got to add. If I'm multiplying, I have to divide. If I'm dividing, I have to multiply. I have to do the opposite function. Then I carry it over and do it on the opposite side. So I'm subtracting with 6 here, which means the opposite of is to add 6. And if I add 6 here, I have to add 6 over here. Well, this mult or minus and addition tells me that I'm just canceling out the 6s. That's the whole point. Get rid of it here and make sure it affects that side. So I'm left with 6 plus 4, which is 10. So what I'm left with is my 10C by itself is equal to 10. Well, now I look at 10C, a coefficient with variables, multiplication. So I have to do the opposite function. The opposite of multiplying is dividing. So I'm going to divide both of these by 10 and 10. That cancels the 10 out where the letter is. So the variable is by itself. And it allows me to divide over here. Well, 10 goes into 10 one time. So that tells me that the C that's left by itself is equal to 10 divided by 10, which is 1. Opposite function, then on the opposite side. So on your paper, you'll see that this is actually equal to 22. I don't know why I left those off, and I apologize. But if I have this set up, then I'm going to combine the minus P with the P, because I need to put my like terms together first. I have 4P minus P. I put the plus 1 at the and behind the parentheses, and it's equal to the 22. When I combine 4p minus p, well, 4 minus 1 is just going to be 3. So I know it's 3p plus 1 is equal to 22. So now I have to look at my constant. My constant is adding 1. i got to do the opposite. The opposite function is subtracting 1. So I'm going to subtract 1 there, but I have to do it on the opposite side as well, because if I just drop this off, has to affect the other side to do it correctly. 
when I have added and subtracting, I'm just going to cancel those out. And therefore, I'm going to have 22 minus 1. Well, 22 minus 1 is 21. So what I'm left with is the 3p by itself is equal to 21. Now I look at my coefficient of my variable. I know those together mean multiplication. So I'm going to divide by the 3 by the coefficient. I want to divide by 3 here. I want to divide by 3 here. I have to do it also on the opposite side. 3's cancel out, which gives me my p by itself, which is what I have to have. So I'm left with just dividing 21 by 3. So if I have p is equal to 21 divided by 3 is 7, then I know my p is equal to 7. Right. So now these look a little different because this is the distributive property. Well, this doesn't change anything that I do other than just adds another step of making sure I distribute whatever my outside number is. So my number 6 is a constant on the outside, and I have to distribute it into both of those pieces. If the number is touching parentheses, I know it's multiplication. So in these two situations, it's distributing. I mean, I'm going to multiply each piece inside the parentheses by this constant of 6. So when I do that, I take on my handy dandy calculator, which would be easier, 6 times 4.5. 6 times 4.5 is 27, and then I just keep the B with the 27. Then I'm going to distribute it from the 6 and the 6. 6 and 6 make 36. Everything else is now going to stay the same. So I'm going to rewrite my problem showing that I know it stays the same, and I have 27b minus 36, dropping the subtraction that's inside the parentheses, is equal to the 18 that they tell me. Now what do I do? Well, now I do what I did up here. Opposite function on the opposite side. So I'm looking at my constant first. I'm subtracting with 36, which tells me I have to do the opposite. So the opposite of subtraction is going to be to add. So I'm going to add on this side 36, which tells me I have to affect the other side. So on the opposite side, I'm also going to add 36. So that's going to cancel those 36s out and leave me with just adding 36 and 18. So I have 27b by itself is equal to, hand to hand calculator, 18 plus 36 equals 54. Now I have just my constant, or excuse me, my coefficient and my variable. So I have to take my 27. I'm multiplying by 27, which tells me now, now I need to divide by 27. And if I divide over here, I have to divide over there. So I'm going to have divided by 27, divided by 27, cancels out the 27s with the B, so B is by itself, which tells me the B just has to be equal to whatever 54 divided by 27 is. And today the calculator tells you that B is going to be equal to 2, because 2 times 27 is 54. All right, so I've combined all these things that we have been doing into this problem. Please do that problem. Check your answer after it's written down. We'll see how we're doing and where we are. So hopefully you've got an answer, and now you're ready to check, and you started with your distributive property, which means I'm going to distribute the 55 to the 11n, and then the 5, or not the 55, the 5, and the 5 to the 3. You take 5 times 11n, which gives you 55n, and then you took 5 times the 3, which was 15. And then once you had that, you just kept the addition, and you kept the equals 235. So you rewrote your math problem to show that 55n plus 15 equals 235. Once you did that, then you look at your constant of 15 and what you're doing. I'm adding with it, so the opposite function would be to subtract with it. So I have to get rid of the 15 by subtracting, doing the opposite function. Then I have to do it on the opposite side. It has to affect the other side of the equal sign. So canceling out the 15s and then 235 minus 15 is just 220. That leaves me with 55n is equal to 220. And then hopefully you just divide it. Because in order to get rid of this multiplication by 55, the opposite is divide by 55. And you showed me that you're dividing both sides by 55. And then on your handy dandy calculator, when I divide by 55, I get 1. And 220 divided by 55, I see that my n, which is the only thing that's left, is equal to 4. This is not a difficult lesson. 
This is more steps than what we have been doing on most of these problems here recently. So just make sure you slow down, make sure you understand that coefficients are numbers with variables, which are letters. And anytime they're together, that means that I am multiplying. And if I have multiple coefficients with the same variable, I can combine them. If they're both going to be added, I add them together. If there's subtraction going on, I subtract them together. The variable stays the same. Any constants that are with themselves will stay the same. Then when I go to do the math and I solve for them, if it asks me to, then I have to do the opposite function on the opposite side until I get that variable by itself. If they tell me what the variable is in, equal to, then I just substitute it in. If they tell me that the x is equal to 17, I would just plug in a 17 where that x is and do the multiplication that it tells me to. Video is a little longer, but it's not too long. Just to make sure you take your time to do the assignment. It's not designed to be difficult by any means, but it's designed for you to get an A and understand what you're going to be doing for the next several years in math as you go through Webook.